Today, I'm a very lucky boy. I've been invited down to BMW UK to ride the all new for 2021 R1250RT. Now for 2021, what they've done, they've updated the styling of this machine, as you can see. Now looks a lot, lot better than the old one. It's of course based on the GS1250 platform. So the Boxster 1250cc engine, telelever suspension, you know, so really the GS platform, but built as a touring weapon. For 2021, this bike now has adaptive cruise control. So I'm going to be able to test adaptive cruise control today. So I'm really quite excited about that. This bike also has a massive 10 and a half inch TFT. So it is the ultimate touring machine. So without further ado, I've got about an hour and a half's route planned in this. BMW has set me a nice little route, taken me around the countryside, bit of motorway work to test out the adaptive cruise control. So this is going to be quite exciting. I'm quite excited about this. Chopsy, roll the intro. Right, powering her on. Look at that screen. That is a big old screen. Look at it. Oh. This is actually my first time aboard an RT. I've ridden obviously the GS, I've ridden uh, the RS, you know, all, all based on this same platform. This is my first time on the RT. My first time on the real touring weapons. This is the most touring -y version <laughs> of that GS platform. So as I said, you know, this is basically the GS under the skin. Telelever suspension, so you've got all that lovely telelever suspension which works very, very well on the GS. Uh, shaft drive for, you know, low maintenance and all that good stuff. But this just has those extras really built for touring. So riding the bike, before we get into all the tech and all the, all the business end of this machine, the actual ride is very, very nice. That engine is smooth, a tiny little bit vibey, but it is pretty, on the whole, very smooth. The riding position is lovely and comfortable, absolutely beautifully comfortable. The seat is comfortable, just the position, you know, you, you sat upright, the bars are high, very commanding riding position I would say and then you've got a lot of motorcycle in front of you a lot of motorcycle that's going to give great wind protection it's only about eight degrees well it's nine degrees today it tells me on the screen it's nine degrees at the moment it is a bit nippy but on here I'm not feeling you know, any now I've raised that screen up because look the screen is also electronic up and down uh, we'll have a bit of that up but with that screen up, that is keeping all of that cold air off of me. And I'm all nice and cosy here. As you can see, this bike now has a 10 and a quarter inch TFT. 10 and a quarter inch. Absolutely humongous. But what that means is you can integrate, rather than having the, sat, the separate sat-nav unit, like on the old bikes, it's now all integrated into the dashboard. And what I've done, by using the BMW connected app, which I have on my phone, which is in this little cubby hole with wireless charging, by the way, it's all integrated with the app. So we run through that a little bit of detail when we stop and have a little break. But uh, yeah, it's ex the way that integration works with the app, full sat-nav on the dash, absolutely brilliant. And there's actually the compartment to keep your phone in. So in typical BMW fashion, they thought of everything. <laughs> God, it's got some punch. It's got some punch because this bike has the shift cam engine in it, of course. The full shift cam engine. So I've got it in dynamic mode, which is because this bike is, you know, has fully electronic suspension and everything, it's, it's, it's sportied up. So dynamic gives you the sporty ride and that additional punch from the engine. 1250cc Boxster engine with the shift cam. So exactly like the GS1250, it has that shift cam, which gives it so much more punch over the old engine. It's uh, transformed it. Oh, the wheel's in the air. For me, 
you know, if I had this sort of bike to go touring on, it would have to deliver in the twisties. You know, I wouldn't want to go on a bike which didn't give you that feedback, wasn't rewarding to ride around the corner. Because if I'm on tour, I'm going on tour somewhere which has fantastic roads. And if I get there and I can't enjoy them fantastic roads, then what is the point? So this bike needs to handle, it needs to give you excitement in the twisties and not just be a boring ride, you know. And this is what I think this bike will do because I know the GS does that so well, the new 1250 version. So this should be the same. Lovely feel from the brakes. Very flickable. Surprisingly agile, really is. It's nice, it's very, it feels very well poised, very well balanced. And because of that engine again, all that weight is very low, so changes direction lovely as well. So tick in the box for the handling. So what toys have we got on the switch gear here? We've got regular cruise control. And as I say, this one has the adaptive cruise control. The regular cruise control is standard on this. And it's also very good because you know it you set once you set your speed obviously it keeps it in normal cruise control fashion but if you go downhill it will actually apply the brakes to keep the cruise set at the same speed whereas normally you go downhill cruise control is only controlling the throttle so if it's a steep downhill the bike will increase in speed because it's rolling away you know but this actually the, the standard cruise control will apply brakes and stuff so that, that, that's a great little feature in itself but the real news is the adaptive cruise control. So how does adaptive cruise control work? As I say, it uses the little radar module on the front of the bike to detect the car in front of you. So if you've set the cruise control to say 60 miles an hour and you're approaching a vehicle in front that's doing 50 miles an hour, the bike will actually slow down automatically and rather than you run in the back of him or have to take evasive action, you know, to close the throttle or whatever. So it'll notice the cars come into view in front of the bike and it will slow it down and it will match their speed. Adaptive cruise control set. We're set now. We've got a little car, which I think means we're locked on. Well, we're not locked on, but we, you know, we won't get any closer than that. He's now stopping. The bike's braking all on its own now. The bike's braking on its own. Is it, will the bike accelerate as that guy accelerates? Yeah. It's accelerating and keeping the distance from that car. That is very weird to have the bike braking on its own like that without me touching the brakes. That is very weird. That's going to take some getting used to. But yeah, it's going to sit behind this guy. I've actually got my cruise set to 39, so I need to increase my maximum required speed. So if I set it to 60, so the bike will try and do 60 unless something in front stops it doing that. It's still seeing that car because I've got the little car lit up and it should, he's now going to start braking. Are you going to start braking? The bike is slowing down. It's braking, it's braking. Let's put the hand next to the brake because yeah, and it's stopping me, look. It's stopping me. It's very, very clever that. Very, very clever. Obviously if you touch the brakes yourself or close the throttle it will turn off the cruise control so if you need to take over at any point just touch the brakes and it turns it off just take it back to the furthest away position now the bike should drop back even further from the car in front yeah it's slowly dropping back look that's clever isn't it eh? and that's the furthest away distance that you can have from the from the vehicle in front now there could be some braking going on. There's a corner coming up now. He's braking, the bike's braking. Of course, you've got to be careful with it starting to brake in corners. Of course, this bike's got an IMU. So as you turn into a corner, it knows you're turning into a corner. So it's not going to start braking heavily because it knows it's in a corner. So again, it's clever. It knows you're in a go a corner, so it will ad adapt its braking accordingly. It's a, it's a brilliant system. I wasn't sure whether adaptive cruise control was necessary on a bike. I certainly wouldn't want to spend like a thousand pounds extra on it, but it's only 500 quid on this. I could be tempted if you do a lot of miles, and it's obviously if you're buying one of these, you do do a lot of miles. I think it makes sense. 
I think it makes sense to have that adaptive cruise control and I think I'll definitely have it as an option. Based on my little bit of testing now, it looks like a very good system. Other tech that this bike can have as an extra is the fully adaptive headlight. And the, you know, you've all heard of little cornering lights and all that, but this adaptive one actually doesn't have cornering lights. It, you know, it's pivoted. The headlight pivots up and down, left and right, up to 30 degrees. And as you turn around the corner, it actually turns into the corner. Or if you brake, it you know, will keep it level. If you wheelie, it will keep the headlight pointed down. So it can move in you know, all directions, all forward directions, up to 30 degrees in any one direction. So that is, that's an option. I think that's about £300 option. Christ! God, this thing's punchy! Takes me by surprise! Let's try in a different mode. In dynamic, it's very, very nice. Let's try it in a different mode. Let's go to... Eco. Ah, new for this year, this bike also has an eco mode. And when you're in eco mode, it obviously adjusts all the fueling, makes the shift cam work, so it only works in the most economical fashion. And you get a little bar at the top there to show you if you're giving it too much throttle, you know, your economy reduces. So you've got the game is to try and keep that bar as far to the right as possible. So that's new for this year, the eco mode. What you have got here is these buttons here are your shortcuts, so that's navigation, that one's not assigned to anything, that's your heated grips and stuff, yes please. What's it like in town? Well it is a great big beast, you can filter on it but you've got to be a little bit careful. The good news is the front end is wider than the panniers, so you, if you can get the front end through the mirrors, you don't have to worry about the panniers. Do the mirrors fold? Yeah, the mirrors do fold a little bit, so you can pull another couple of inches in if you fold the mirrors, but uh, yeah, it's fine. It's, it's very manoeuvrable, it doesn't feel unwieldy, so it's, it's, yeah, it's very controllable at low speed, but uh, it's just if you can fit through the gaps to filter. Apart from that, perfect in town. So how much is one of these going to set you back? This version is fully loaded, you know, this has everything on it. Fully loaded, this is just over £20,000. With the active cruise control, everything else this bike's got, just over £20,000. It starts at 158 so you still get quite a lot of equipment standard. You get obviously the standard cruise control, you know, standard modes, you know, a lot of, you don't get the keyless, uh, a lot of, a lot of, you know, all the button, all the shortcut buttons, all that stuff. But you don't have the adaptive headlights, the adaptive cruise control, you know, the keyless ignition, all the other, the quick shift and blipper, you know, all those other extras doesn't come, doesn't come with that. That's one thing, with, you know, that's, BMW always do that. You know, which in some ways is good because you're only getting the extras you really want. So I, I do, I do like that. But of course, it does bump up the price from what the the standard price is. You know, and I think if you end up buying a bike which is the absolute standard one, then it comes to resale. You know, people are going to be looking at bikes which have as many options on as possible. So you're best off putting some. Bait. I'd say if you were buying one of these. I think you'll be best off going for that, at least the adaptive cruise control. Because I think resale, that's what someone's going to want on the 2021 version. So I would definitely spec it with the adaptive cruise control. And 500 quid isn't too obscene. It's not like into the thousands like all the other systems on the other manufacturers' bikes. So there she is, the new R1250 RT. Some big changes really is the styling for this year. It's now got that distinctive DRL look that the new BMWs have, you know, around here. It looks much sleeker, I think. It's a bit more angular, a bit more bulbous looking. I mean, the old bike was not a looker, let's be honest. You know, these bikes are about function over form, let's say. But I think BMW have definitely done a much better job of making it look better. I was never a fan of the old RT. It was just looked really bulbous. It's a bit more even now. It's a bit more even, especially with the luggage, which comes as standard on this, by the way. The luggage is included on this bike. It evens it out. If you didn't have the luggage on it, it would look very front heavy. But with the luggage, it's evened it out. And I think they've done a good job 
of that restyling and I really like this blue coloured one. So starting at the front you've got those BMW branded calipers, the Hayes calipers, the same as what is on the S1000RR. Don't worry that they've dropped Brembo calipers on these. Those calipers work very, very well. There's that shift cam engine, that Boxster 1250cc lump. It is, uh, yeah, that, that engine is, you know, it's an old design, been around for years, but it's so refined now. It's actually a lovely, lovely unit. The bike does have a bit of width to it. There it is from the rear. You know, big tail light, your big luggage. You know, the, the, the good thing about it is the front is wider than the luggage. So if you can get the front through, you know your luggage is going to fit through. So we have to talk about this screen. Massive, massive screen on this bike. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. You know, the standard BMW screen, you know, the standard clock. I mean, this screen is the best in the business. Very, very high resolution. And now it's just absolutely humongous. And here is my phone charging on the wireless charger. So the phone is linked to the to the the app is linked to the bike. All of that map information is actually running on my phone. Which what that means is when you come to your coffee stop, you take the phone out of the bike, you can then make all the changes you want to do to your route on your phone. And then it's just you know you, you, so you're not locked into the bike. You haven't, you haven't you haven't got to only make those changes when you're on the bike. It's all on the phone via the app. So you do your changes at your coffee stop and it's all there when you come back to your bike. But the phone is in the BMW Motorrad app mode. So you slide it in. Don't worry, it won't rattle around because it's got a little locking mechanism here to lock it in place. And now it's charging with the green light, it means it's charging. And this area is actually cooled with a fan, so it won't, your phone won't overheat in here. There's a little fan to cool this area down. Brilliant. USB port. There are your shortcut buttons I mentioned before. Assign those to whatever you want. Another cubby hole here, because that's where the key is, because of course this one's keyless ignition, but it is optional. The standard panniers. Let's have a look. Oh, they're quite big, aren't they? You can carry as much polystyrene as you like in those. Loads of stuff. I don't know what literage they are. And they've got a seal on as well, so I presume they're also fully waterproof as well. Loads of seating for the passenger. It must be a very, very, very comfortable bike to be on the back of. And you've got big grab rails as well. You could put, I guess you can put additional top box on here if you wanted to. And that, I would say, is about it let's jump back on it's quite hard to get the side stand up when you're on the bike slight criticism so what is it like on the motorway this is where i think this adaptive cruise control is going to excel set my cruise control 82 miles an hour if i now pull in behind this car who's going slower than that it then drops my speed to match him so if you go in, everyone, everyone's going really quick on the motorway today, so it's very difficult for me to demonstrate. But if I go along at 70 miles an hour, and there's a car in front of you doing 60 miles an hour, it just sits down, settles in behind that car now. And if I want to overtake that car, indicate right, the bike then starts to accelerate back up to my set, my preset speed, 82. And you overtake. <laughs> it's, it's very, very good. If you're covering big distances, that just makes it so much easier, doesn't it? I know a lot of people say, I want to ride my bike, I don't want it riding itself, and then it's not for you. But uh, I think that is very good, and on a long, boring trip on the motorway, it would, it would make it much easier. Wind protection, well, I'm sat at 75-ish, and it's absolutely lovely. This air here, completely calm here. Nothing on my body, even on the, at the, at the here, there's nothing. It's not until you get to here, that's where the wind is. And you can sit at 100 miles an hour in perfect comfort. Don't ask me how I know, <laughs> but you can. So what do I think to the RT? I actually really like it. And if you did a lot of touring, if you needed a bike to cover big distances, be comfortable for a passenger, have all of the toys, all of the mod cons, all of the creature comforts and convenience, it's lovely. And it doesn't feel like a great big heavy 
unwieldy beast, which I thought it might do, you know, which is almost how it looks a little bit. You think, gosh, that's, that's a massive bike. I'm never going to be able to ride that. You know, and it's a bit intimidating when you first get on this, but that weight is so low because of that Boxster engine that you don't notice that this is really, you know, a 265 kilo motorcycle. And when you're riding it, it feels like a, well, it feels like a 200 kilo motorcycle. It doesn't feel like a heavy bike at all. It's got a bit of width to it. You've got to be a bit of careful filtering and stuff like that, obviously. But it is a fantastic bike for covering silly distances on. And because it handles, it's responsive, it's powerful, carries a lot of fuel and is good on petrol, it ticks a lot of boxes. I was afraid that, yeah, it would be comfortable and you could cover big distances on it, but it wouldn't be rewarding if you got to some twisty roads. If you're going on tour to the Picos, when you got there, you wouldn't enjoy the twisties because you're on a great big unwieldy beast. It's not like that. That dynamic mode is very good. It sharpens up the whole bike, but it's never going to be a sports bike. You know, it's never going to be a sports bike, but for a big tourer, it makes it extremely tall. It handles, get good feedback from, the, this is in dynamic now, and you can see the suspension is actually quite stiff. It's actually throwing me around a little bit because it, that electronic suspension really does make a massive difference on the BMWs. Their electronic suspension system is, I think, the best. Absolutely the best. And with these other, this big screen is amazing. The adaptive cruise control is locked onto that car in front there and it's got me sat behind him. It's very, very good. Massive thanks to BMW for inviting me to ride one of these. That's really appreciated. If you're interested in reviews like this, and if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing, ticking that bell, subscribing to the channel, then you'll be notified of all the new uploads I do. I'm going to be riding a lot of bikes this year. I've already ridden quite a lot of bikes this year. So if you're interested in the new 2021 models, subscribe to the channel and get all of the latest information. Thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Cheers. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! Listen to this. Oh, I can notice the whim of that screen down. Let's get it back up. <laughs>